where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17. May your Spirit, Lord, guide me everywhere I go. Make me a channel through which your blessings flow. You are listening to Pentecost Novena Devotion with Father Pilani Mube a daily bread member from the Diocese of Wange, Zimbabwe. Stay tuned. I find you in the sick and in the needy. May I see you in the sad and in the lonely. May they feel your ever healing presence and find in you the strength they need again. May your spirit, Lord, Guide me everywhere I go Make me a channel Through which your blessings flow May your spirit, Lord Guide me everywhere I go Make me a channel Through which your blessings flow Invocation of the Holy Spirit Come, O Holy Spirit Fill the hearts of the faithful and enkindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created. And you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray. O God, who taught the hearts of the faithful by the light of the Holy Spirit, grant that by the gift of the same Spirit we may be always truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, and of the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Act of Contrition O oh my God, I am sorry and beg pardon for all my sins, and detest them above all things because they have crucified my loving Saviour, Jesus Christ. And most of all, because they offend your infinite goodness. And I firmly resolve, by the help of your grace, never to offend you again, and carefully to avoid the occasion of sin. Prayer for the Seven Gifts of the Holy Ghost O Lord Jesus Christ, who before ascending into heaven, did promise to send the Holy Ghost to finish thy work in the souls of thine apostles and disciples, dying to grant the same Holy Spirit to me, that he may perfect in my soul the work of thy grace and thy love. 
Grant me the spirit of wisdom, that I may despise the perishable things of this world and aspire only after the things that are eternal. The spirit of understanding, to enlighten my mind with the light of thy divine truth. The spirit of counsel, that I may ever choose the surest way of pleasing God and gaining heaven. The spirit of fortitude, that I may bear my cross with thee, and that I may overcome with courage all the obstacles that oppose my salvation. The spirit of knowledge, that I may know God and know myself, and grow perfect in the science of the saints. The spirit of piety, that I may find the service of God sweet and amiable. The spirit of fear, that I may be filled with a loving reverence towards God and may dread in any way to displease Him. Mark me, dear Lord, with the sign of Thy true disciples, and animate me in all things with Thy spirit. Amen. Amen. Breathe into me, Holy Spirit, that my thoughts may all be holy. Move in me. Holy Spirit, that my work to you may be holy. Attract my heart, Holy Spirit, that I may love only what is holy. Strengthen me, Holy Spirit, that I may defend all that is holy. Protect me, Holy Spirit, that I may always be holy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the gift of life, for the gift of everything. Above all, we give you thanks for the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, who is part of the Godhead, who gives us many other gifts, including the fear of the Lord. Enable us, Lord, to be afraid of you. Enable us, Lord, to be able to be closer to you. Enable us, Lord, to understand this fear of you. And enable us, Lord, to love this fear of you. We ask all this through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, today we meditate upon the gift of the fear of the Lord. It is one of the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Perhaps most of us, we have many questions on what the fear of the Lord is. When we go back into scripture, in many places we come across this issue of the fear of the Lord. In the Old Testament, in Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7, and in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10, we hear about the fear of the Lord as the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord as the beginning of wisdom. God is our Lord and Father. If God is our Lord and Father, why should we fear him? How do these two terms come together? God who is eternal goodness and fear at the same time. Uh, perhaps we ought to go deeper to try and understand what the fear of the Lord means. The fear of the Lord perhaps is not the fear in the way we understand it today or this very now. Fear is normally associated with things that we don't want to see or we don't want to experience close to us. Fear is normally associated with the phobias some kind of extreme or irrational fears to something or of something. And these kinds of irrational fears can become disorders sometimes in our day-to-day -day lives. But then the fear of the Lord refers to the continual awareness of the presence of God in everything we do. That sincere commitment to obey him, to understand his presence in our day-to-day -day lives. In other ways, 
It, it refers to what is called a deep reverence. A deep reverence of God. That is the fear of the Lord. <laughs> you know, the word fear itself, F-E-A-R, F-E-A-R, fear. Some always say fear means forget everything and run. Forget everything and run. When you see something that you're afraid of, just forget everything. Take your heels, run to save your lives. That is the understanding of fear for most of us. F-E-A-R, forget everything and run. But when we look into the scriptures, for all those who met the Lord, they were afraid. But the encounter between them and the Lord, the encounter between them and God, had beautiful results. The result of blessings. The results of God protecting them. The results of God manifesting himself every good thing in their lives. And yet, yes, they were afraid to meet him. They were afraid of the Lord. My, my dear friends, it is quite interesting to note that we say the fear of the Lord is a gift. Yes, it is a gift. And we should pray for it. To recognize the presence of God in everything we do, that is the fear of the Lord. To be fully and continually aware of his presence. To embrace his presence in our day-to-day -day lives. That is the fear of the Lord. And that makes us to say, yes, God is present. So let us do good. God is present. Let us avoid evil. God is present. Let us always acknowledge his presence by ourselves becoming holy. That is the fear of the Lord. Hence, it is a gift in that way. Instead of us forgetting everything and running away, the fear, the, the energy of running away can be channeled to God. To say, God, please, since we are afraid, instead of running away, let us run towards God. Instead of forgetting everything and running, face everything and rise in God. Let it be positive fear. Let us learn to overcome our fears, to overturn our fears into something positive. To face everything and rise in God. There are many types of fears, my dear friends. Someone have a, a, a fear of losing. Always there are others who are afraid to lose in their lives. You can be afraid to lose your beloved one. You can be afraid to lose your business. A fear of losing, simply losing, is there. Some have a fear of failure in their lives. They are afraid to fail. Every day they pray that they never fail. That is a fear. Some are afraid of rejection, simply to be rejected, or simply failure to experience love. Some are afraid of missing out. They just cannot miss out. You are afraid you miss out, you think things are going to turn upside down. And hence, some are also afraid of change. Just to change something, they prefer to maintain a routine kind of life where everything is kind of safe for them because they are used to it. Fear of change, fear of loss of control. Some are even afraid to be friends with others because you are afraid what, of, what are people going to say about you befriending certain people who probably the community has castigated or the community talks bad about them. Fear. My dear friends, let us learn to overcome our day-to-day -day fears. Instead of forgetting everything and running, let us face everything and rise. We have to rise in God, rise in the Lord. That way, we rechannel the energies of fear into positive energy of recognizing the presence of God who eventually gives us the strength to rise. When we look at Joshua 24 verses 14, the fear being referred to there, it means respect. It means respect. Fear can as well mean respect. The fear of the Lord can as well mean the respect of the Lord. Whereby you know that in everything you do, God is present. So you have to respect the presence of God. And also, we, 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 we realize that 
in Proverbs, as I said, Proverbs 1, verse 7, when it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom or knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Fools despise it. And at times, we have to admit, we can be so foolish when we despise the fear of the Lord. We prefer to fear darkness instead of God. Sometimes we prefer to fear what the people say instead of fearing what God is saying. We prefer to fear, you know, useless things. Things that can only harm the body. We are not afraid of one who can harm the soul, the maker of the soul, God himself. Rather, let us be afraid of God. Let us fear him. In another context in the scripture, we, we, we come across the phrase, do not be afraid or fear not in the scripture. It's quite interesting to know that this phrase, fear not or do not be afraid in the Bible, it appears 365 times. 365 times. And those are the days that number to a total year. It means to say, in each and every day of our lives, my dear friends, let us learn not to be afraid of anything else only but God. Let us only give reverence and respect and recognize the presence of God in everything we do. Hence, do not be afraid each and every day. Rather, each and every day, turn to God. Recognize His presence. He evaluates our day-to-day -day actions, what we think, what we say, and what we do. All those things appeal to the way we behave towards God and to the way we behave in our everyday situations. Do not be afraid. Fear not. Rather, let us pray for the gift of the fear of the Lord. That reverence, recognizing his presence, recognizing his continual, to have a continual awareness, a deep reverence of God and a sincere commitment to love him and to obey him. There are many of us too, we have got phobias. Those types of anxiety disorders, these extreme irrational fears. It could be acrophobia, the fear of heights. It could be aerophobia, fear of flying. Hydrophobia, fear of water. Hemophobia, fear of blood. Gastrophobia, fear of the crowds, to mention but a few. But all those things are nothing when they are channeled to God himself who is present. God can help you overcome. And indeed, he helps us to overcome. It is by the gift of the Holy Spirit that we can, in turn, receive the gift of the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord that makes us overcome. So let us learn, my dear friends, today to change the negative fears of forgetting everything and running into a positive thing to face everything and rise in God. And we can only conquer and rise in God when we recognize his presence. Let us pray for ourselves. Let us pray for those who are afraid. Let us pray for the world that is constantly in a state of fear. Sometimes we, 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 we fear the unknown, to fear of what you do not know how your tomorrow will be like. To fear the darkness when you do not know what is in the darkness. But above all, God conquers everything. What we do not know, God knows. God conquers even darkness. Let us rather fear the Lord and let us pray for ourselves that we may remain strong in God and that God may help us overcome the day-to-day -day fears, but may gift us with this fear of him. Through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God bless you all. To those who find that life is such a burden, give them courage and their little faith to strengthen that your people with one heart and voice your praises sing. Love rejoice. May your spirit, Lord, guide me everywhere I go. Make me a channel through which your blessings flow. May your spirit, Lord, guide me everywhere I go. Make me a 
channel through which your blessing